TJ, when you watch that piece, and I'm sure you've seen it, it's been shared numerous times on social media, but when you watch that and see those pictures of your family and your, and your grandfather, what comes to mind? Yeah, I honestly uh, get, get a little teary-eyed every time. Uh, you know, I miss that guy. He's, uh, he's a special part, you know, a special part in my heart. And, uh, you know, I just want to fulfill uh, everything that he wants and, and his legacy and, and just kind of live it on. TJ, something you said stuck with me. If your first reaction to others is respect and love, we'll be fine. I find it so interesting in this world that we expect someone from New York City to think the same as someone who grew up in a cornfield. That's crazy. Two different backgrounds, two different life experiences. How did you come to that conclusion? Yeah, you're 100% you're right. Um, I think if you expect two people to have the same exact opinions, um, life, the world wouldn't even grow. Um, that's, that's what right. allows the world to grow. People have uh, different opinions and different thoughts about situations and uh, allows us to grow in technology and all the other uh, facets of the world and, and, and you know just help everyone. So. Um, I, I don't know what exactly got me to come to that that thought process. I think honestly, uh, but my wife has something to do with this. She's from Portland. I'm from Texas. Two very different uh, political views there, and and she's helped me uh, along the path to kind of uh, grow and, and mature. In the piece, it said you're analytical, you're detailed, you're very goal oriented. How do you try and control a game like baseball that's so largely uncontrollable? <laughs> Um, do your dil due diligence before the game, right, yeah. um, and then and then just play the game. Uh, there's really no control in this game. It's just about making your best pitches uh, or hitters making your best swings and uh, letting your your practice, your work before uh, in the off season, letting that work show up on the field. Well, what are you doing different? 12.3 Ks per nine. You see it right now. I mean, you've been almost hittable since since we come we come out of spring training. Has there been a, a a change in what you're trying to accomplish, more conviction, more spin rate. Kind of take me inside your kind of natural maturation. Yeah, my, uh, last year my fastball wasn't the best. Um, I, I was kind of cutting it a little bit, so uh, I worked on the fastball a lot this offseason. I think um, having a, a, a more true fastball it has allowed my other pitches to work better. Um, that and the, the I'm landing the curveball a lot more this, yeah. this season as well. So I'm throwing a lot more strikes. Um, the, the hitters have to respect it, um, and and they they can't sit on three pitches. So and they definitely can't sit on um, 95 plus. So I'm just playing the cards correctly right now, and I you know hope to uh, stay on this course. What do you think, TJ, is helping you land more strikes? Is did you clean up your mechanics? Is there something you were working on the off season core wise, balance wise, to to kind of get you back in the zone more? No, honestly, uh, this offseason, I wanted to work on my fastball, like I said, uh, and then slider kind of secondary. I kind of didn't really work on my curveball too much. Uh, came into camp, and it was really bad. The curveball was really, really bad. And uh, DJ uh, was like, hey, you know, quit freaking out. It's a good pitch. Like, you're going to figure it out. And uh, I was freaking out. I, I didn't have my curveball, and, and that was my kind of my baby. And um, he, he helped me with some, you know, mechanical cues and just getting to the, the correct spot, getting to the same spot every single time. And it's allowed my hand to kind of work out front and, uh, and be more consistent with that release point. And, and so I know where it's going. Yeah. I'm looking at the numbers here, TJ. Uh, your curveball is at 80 that you mentioned. The fastball almost 97 miles per hour. Uh, but you, you added 115, 150 RPMs to your slider this season. Can you kind of put it in, in layman's terms for us? The importance of that and how did you add that much? Yeah, the slider, um, I've, I've leveraged the ball a slightly different in my hand this year. Um, I'm, I just add a little bit more pressure and then like a little bit more like finish to it. Like instead of just like letting it work out of my hand, I'm actually like consciously thinking about finishing the pitch. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, it's kind of weird that the, just that pitch ha increases in spin and then the other two are relatively the same. TJ, I think it's I think it's fair to say we've struggled to define the ceiling for this team. There's spurts of brilliance. There's talent for days. How would you define the ceiling and how far this team can go? Yeah, that's why I'm wearing this uh, this sweatshirt right here, the Red Dogs. You know, we came into camp. Uh, all the predictions said that we weren't going to make the playoffs. We we're going to be the last in NL Central. And, uh, you know, we wanted to take that underdog mentality and take the heart and wear it on our sleeves. So uh, we're the Cincinnati Red Dogs, and we're going to work. We came out, prove everyone wrong. And, and I think uh, 
I think the first, the beginning of last month, kind of shows our our full potential when we're when we're gears are our gears are firing and uh, we can beat any team. I mean, we went to L.A. and and beat them, yeah. and um, cool. we had a really good series against the the Giants as well. And um, I think I think we're really close, and we I think we have a lot of potential. This team's special, very special. T.J. John Bones Jones or Amir Garrett in the <laughs> UFC match? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean. Close. Oh, that's that's tough. I gotta go with my boy. <laughs> I gotta go with my boy Amir. Amir's he will not say no to that. He doesn't say no to anything. You can't walk back in the clubhouse if you don't say Amir. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of that was my thought process on that one. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, breakfast. What, yeah, what we have for breakfast? We're getting ready to have a big, big inning. You need some breakfast. What we what we have? Oh yeah. Yeah, I showed up to the field a little late, forgot I had the interview, so I shoved some eggs and some waffles down my throat and ran out here. <laughs> waffles. Man, like waffles. over medium? Hunter's breakfast. Over yeah. easy? No, he scrambled. No, they scrambled. 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 Our, uh, our chef makes a really good, like, Belgian waffle, too, so always, those are really good. Man. He's, can't miss Robert's those. Robert's intermittent I, I can't, I can't even get a cold so diet Dr. Pepper in this joint. He's completely miserable. He's got a chef. Jeez. Hey, oh. TJ, thanks for spending Thank some time you. with us. Yes. We really enjoyed your story. Uh, appreciate you coming on with us, and good luck the rest of the way.